Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam, and in this video, I'm going to be planting the snow fountain weeping cherry. Uh, before I put this thing in the ground, I kind of wanted to go over some things you might want to look for when you're shopping for trees. One of the main things that we need to look for is what we call root flare. Near the base of any tree you're purchasing, it should be a little larger right before it enters the soil. We call that the root flare. If you go out into any woody space or a park or anywhere and just look at the bottoms of the trees, you're going to see they flare right before they enter the soil. What can happen in the nursery business is a lot of times these trees go through several different processes. This, this tree happens to be grafted, so this bottom part of this tree was actually grown up for a while and then it was cut off. The weeping cherry was grafted onto this other cherry tree down here at the base. This bottom piece has probably been planted three, maybe four times in its life from the time that it was either a seedling or it was a rooted cutting. And each time it gets planted, the potential exists for that person planting it to have planted it too deep. And the result of that is you can end up with roots wrapped around above your root flare in your container and you not even know it. The other thing that can happen is that wood that's above the ground is not really wood that can sit in water all the time. The, wa the wood that's grown under the ground is definitely more tolerant of staying wet for prolonged periods of time. It's also an entry point for disease and insect problems. So you definitely want to look at that. When I'm looking at a tree, I want to make sure the stem is healthy. I want to make sure near that base that I can see it just flaring out a little bit. It doesn't have to be very, very pronounced when it's a small tree, but you'll know uh, if it's not, if it just runs straight into the pot with no flare at all, it's probably been planted too deep at some point. I'm in zone seven and certainly from probably zone six B and higher down to nine or 10, I like to plant trees as they've gone dormant in the fall. This is the absolute perfect time to be planting in my area. Maybe if you're in zone four, five or six A uh, early spring before they leaf out. So either way, they're dormant when you plant them. That's really the best time to put them in the ground. I have dug this hole already. This is a 15 gallon container, so it's a pretty beefy uh, tree here. I've already dug the hole and I wasn't that concerned about it. I was able to dig this hole with this little skinny trenching shovel here in less than 10 minutes. This soil is just not bad at all over here. I've been amending it forever. So I've dug it about one and a half times the width of the container. If it was really compact and it had been really hard to get down in there, I'd probably gone a little wider just to give it some additional space to get rooted out. Uh, into the surrounding soil easily. I don't dig perfectly cylindrical holes. I'll actually create some edges and some spots along the edge of the hole where the roots will hit the spot and go into the ground rather than acting like a container and start to wrap around inside the hole that I've dug. So keep that in mind. The kind of the rougher the shape is, the better. Don't dig little perfect little pots uh, because it'll just act the same in the ground as it did in the container and roots will hit that, start wrapping around one another. I'm using some pine bark soil conditioner. I'm just gonna pour it on top of this soil and so that when it goes back into the hole, it'll mix itself in. I use pine bark soil conditioner in my clay-based soils because it keeps that clay from recompacting uh, very quickly. If you had sandier soils, you might use peat moss or you might use something like compost. Like I say, I went out of my way to select a tree where the root flare is exposed. I definitely now in this planting don't want to end up planting it too deep and covering it up. So. I'm gonna leave this tree up a couple inches above the grade. I'm gonna pull the soil up to the edge of it. I'm gonna put my old pine straw back in place around it. I'm gonna mulch this whole area pretty soon. And having the tree elevated a couple inches and having my root flare exposed, there's probably no chance that I'll ever start burying it by accident. You wanna be careful in the future that you're not burying your trees in pine straw and mulch. And you see this all over the place now where people just build these little cones of mulch and pine straw up on the bottom of their tree. That root flare needs to be exposed. Like I say, if you'll go out in a wooded space and look, all those trees have that flare exposed. When I pull it out of the container, I will break up any roots that are wound tightly around it. If, if they're really tightly wound, I'll take my shovel and just cut them uh, with my shovel or take a blade and cut them. But I'm pretty aggressive, especially on trees. I want this tree to sit here for 20 or 30 years. So I want to go through the process of digging the proper hole, using the proper amendments, and making sure that uh, these roots aren't gonna just wrap circles around one another in the future. So that's basically it. Dug the hole, mix in the pine bark soil conditioner, leave the tree elevated some, 
pack it down tight, water it in well. I'm gonna let it dry out substantially before I water it again. I'm planting in the middle of November at this point, and we get pretty regular rainfall this time of year. We're very dry in September and October. I start to get normal rainfall again at this point. I'm not gonna have to do a lot of ongoing watering on this tree. I definitely want it to dry out some between each watering. So thank you very much for watching this video, and if it was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. I had dug the hole to the full depth of the tree, and I want to put some of that loose soil back in it. It's a little lower than I want it. I'll just kick some of this into the side like this. This is all you have to do on this. Sometimes they're hard to pull back out of the hole. And I'll use my shovel and actually lift it and let some of that soil slide under there. That's a good technique to use without having to remove it, put it back in, remove it, put it back in. You'll just knock more and more soil off of it. But I got it perfect now. I'm exactly, let's see, probably right at two inches above where the original grade was.